Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today uh, on how a global bank has able, been able to have significant cost savings with hot docs. I'm Mark Settle. I'm the Director of Technical Services in the United States for Hot Docs, which oversees uh, technical support, training, implementation, uh, and template development for customers in the United States. Uh, joining me as well is Lois McClucky, who is the Head of Marketing in the UK for Hot Docs, and she'll be assisting me with Q&A at the end of the webinar today. Just a couple of items. We are recording the webinar today, so we will be making it available on our website so that you can view it at your uh, at your leisure, and then we also will do Q&A at the end. So this is an audio only, so if you have questions, you need to type them into the, the question section of the panel, and then we'll be able to handle those questions after the presentation. So who is Hot Docs? Uh, we're the market leader in document assembly. In fact, this is our market. We, we created it more than 20 years ago uh, with the first uh, real document assembly tool uh, that, uh, on the market. We have over a million users worldwide and over 9,000 clients. Uh, we have partners across the world, 40 plus partners, and Hot Docs is deployed in over 60 countries worldwide. Uh, we have offices both in the United States and in Europe, and we have been, are an award-winning technology. And even though our technology has been around for well over two decades, we continue to win awards uh, around uh, fastest growing company. Uh, you can see there the, the Gartner Cool Vendor Award from 2014. As well as this year, we're excited uh, to win a digital technology award as well. What is document automation? Document automation is the process that allows you to take a document that you use within your business and turn it into a template. So you're able to use Hot Docs tools to create a template from your document, and that template would contain fields and conditional logic and other things that would drive uh, a document creation process. So from a user perspective, the user would then see an interview process, so a question and answering session, and the user would simply answer questions, and the, the answers that they provide would be used along with the template to generate your output documents. So what are the reasons to use document automation? Uh, so as you're thinking about that, you can imagine uh, first of all, it's gonna allow you to enhance your compliance and, and reduce some risk. So what that uh, implementation of a template does, it allows you to have some control over those documents. And so you can control how those output documents are created, what language is used in them, and simply allow the user to answer questions. So you eliminate this risk of users copying old documents or pasting something in, forgetting to change certain things in a document that might lead to, to litigation or invalid contracts uh, and other issues within your business. So this really allows to, to mitigate risk. In banking, that's very important, of course, when you're dealing with mortgages and, and lending and, and, and dollars and cents, right? If, if you miss a zero on a, con, on a, uh, a mortgage, that, that makes a very big difference, of course. Uh, it allows for better efficiency as well. So you can improve your process and, and make it easier for users. So, of course, improving efficiency leads to time and cost savings. So you implement this, users have a much faster way to generate those documents that you use. And it allows for standardization and simplified data entry for the user. So sometimes there are uh, already some, some process for data entry uh, that just might not be as logical or as clean uh, for the user to input that data. And so this really allows that to be simplified. And in some cases, there might be duplicate data entry happening. And so you can utilize Hot Docs to tie into existing data sources where that data is being entered. Uh, most banks have a system of record already where quite a bit of information for loans or other documents are already being entered. And if Hot Docs ties into those systems of record, it allows that data to be uh, pulled into the interview process, simplifying what the user actually needs to enter to generate documentation. So who uses Hot Docs? So first, let's talk about a little bit of solutions. We're talking about banking today. Uh, so obviously commercial lending, uh, high volume of documentation happening there, uh, so that is a big use of Hot Docs. Hot Docs started in the legal industry uh, years ago, and, and now we're across various markets, uh, but there's a lot of use in legal, as you can imagine, with repetitive document creation and legal. So estate planning, incorporation processing, compliance enforcement, employee management, 
uh, insurance using it for claims processing, banking for commercial lending, and then within banking as well you have these other ideas where you have legal documents and uh, HR and other documents that might also apply uh, to use in HotDocs. So you can see these are uh, a, a sample of some of the different areas where HotDocs is used. Uh, and then the industries, like I said, we started in the legal industry, but we have uh, a very big presence in banking and insurance publishers who publish content for use with hot docs. So there are businesses out there who create templates that can be used in hot docs as a product. And then also within government organizations so with a large presence in all of these markets. In fact, uh, some of our clients for the top five U.S. banks use hot docs. Uh, some of the largest global banks also use hot docs. Uh, over half of the AMLA 200 firms in the U.S., so that's the top 200 firms in the U.S., 60% of the top insurance companies in the U.S. use hot docs, and the world's largest legal publishers utilize hot docs. In fact, many of them creating products that, uh, that can be sold to, to uh, consumers in the legal uh, field uh, to use a specific set of content. For example, New York real estate documents. So the state uh, provided documents by the state bar organization utilized by uh, consumers throughout the state. So there's this idea of being able to utilize it with your own content and often even from publishers being able to use their content. All right, so it's ideal for banking. Uh, lending, of course, is, is the primary uh, place you might think about uh, when you think about document automation. Banks uh, do a lot of documentation around lending commercial uh, loans, you know, term notes, bridge or mortgages, promissory notes, leasing, uh, continuing guarantees. These are just some examples of various documents in the lending uh, space that you might use. And that might be across different groups within you know, small business, middle market, uh, commercial term lending for large corporations. Uh, and so all of those documents are very standardized typically within a, within a business at a bank. And then that lends itself very well to the document automation process. Customer onboarding. So HotDocs, as we'll see in a little bit, has a very powerful intake or an interview process. And so you can utilize that to do some data intake from your customers or to create client credit documents or evaluate risk uh, to, to data gather from that user and maybe even provide some documentation back to them. Uh, asset wealth and management, so estate planning, as well as internal documents that you might use. So internal, you know, in-house in legal documentation, human resource documents that need to be created, uh, you know, any of those documents that are taking specific data points and applying them to a standardized document. Uh, they all lend themselves very well to the document automation process. All right, so let's look at our case study. Today we're going to talk about a top five U.S. bank, a little bit about this bank. They have over two, $2 trillion assets, uh, obviously one of the largest banks in the world, uh, global operation with uh, over 200,000 employees. Uh, they're a leader in small business and commercial banking, investment banking, consumer financial services, asset management, and private equity. So this is a, a market-leading bank that's built a very successful business. Now let's, let's talk about the problem that they had uh, and why they chose to implement hot docs at, at their business. So first, there was uh, word macros were quite often what was used for document generation. So these word macros, they, they functioned for what they, they needed to do, but they were very difficult to maintain and they required quite a bit of uh, development from a developer rather than someone who's not a developer being able to manage that content. So it took a lot of maintenance and overhead and, and there was a lot of frustration in being able to work with those. They had disparate documentation systems across the bank. So this is a top five U.S. bank, so a very large business, and they had different groups that come sometimes from merging with another bank or just different business units choosing to implement things in slightly different ways. So that made things a lot more difficult for them to maintain and they really wanted to be able to centralize the documentation process at the bank. So they wanted to eliminate having four or five different ways to do this. Somebody's using word macros, somebody else is just doing copy and paste, somebody's using maybe a simple system that didn't quite meet the needs. Uh, and so they wanted to provide a, a standardized platform for documentation and, and ease that maintenance and, and the, how they update it. A lot of user frustration. Uh, user A over here in this, this group is you know, frustrated with what the limitations are to their system, but they see somebody else over here doing it a different way 
and you know a lot of things uh, just leading to frustration because of that uh, difference across the business. And then they didn't have centralized template control. So you had different groups maybe working on the same type of content, but uh, changing it. So it was a little bit different. And so you weren't putting on a common front across the business. So they wanted to have much more control over how those templates were created uh, to be able to standardize them and to be able to uh, use have a common business uh, you know, face in, in that documentation. And then it was time consuming. So word macros and the way that they were managed and the process for going back and forth to update things just took a lot of time and often didn't save as much time in creating the documents as they really wanted to see. So these were some of the problems that they were facing as a, as a business. So what's the solution? Automate the loan documents. So take all of these different business units that were doing things in different ways and come up with a standardized platform to be able to have automated loan document templates. And they, they evaluated different resources and, and chose Hot Docs because of the benefit that it was going to bring them in this process. So what they do is they have this ability to have a single data gathering form often for a loan package. So a loan package often consists of multiple documents. Uh, there might be a guarantee, but there might also be some deeds and some other documentation that you need in that loan package. And, and so this would allow them to have a single data gathering form that information could be input into and generate all of the documents that they need to for a specific loan. Uh, they implemented a service-oriented architecture. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But that service-oriented architecture allowed them to have a common documentation platform across the business so that as different business units needed document automation as a part of their solution, they could tie into a single service uh, that the bank was providing. And so they ended up with a single documentation platform in that service-oriented architecture with centralized resources for managing and creating the template content. And then they implemented integration into other systems. So they added version control so that the loan documentation that came out could go right into their ECM. Uh, they use FileNet specifically for their document uh, storage, but you know any document uh, or content management system uh, could fit into an integration like that. And then they were able to do system of record integration. So exactly one of those problems we were looking at why you might want to use document assemblies to, to eliminate data input. Uh, and so rather than having duplicate input, there's this data that already exists in their LOS or their system of record, and their loan origination systems LOS. And so they were able to pull data out of those systems into the hot docs templates and generate documents, sometimes showing an interview with that data and allowing the user to answer additional questions. And in some cases, they have all of the data that they need for a particular documentation right in the system of record. And so they're able to just generate a document. Uh, as an output. So the result, they've got 600 plus end users. So they were able to take across these uh, very large businesses, pull some of that uh, document creation into a very specific process with these document specialists as kind of a back office uh, approach. And they have well over 500 centrally managed Hot Docs templates. So they have a team of users who manage this documentation service and layer and provide services to create the template content across the business. 85% of the data that they need for their documents typically comes from the system of record. So in some cases, they're not even showing the hot interview process. In some cases, that data comes into the interview, and the user just needs to fill out some additional information that's specific to those documents. They generate 500,000 plus loan documents monthly through hot docs. So a very significant gain there in what's happening. And so they're able to be more compliant and definitely able to, to mitigate risk. They have a very controlled process with the documentation to make sure that their output content is what they expect it to be. And so they get error-free documents generated very efficiently, and they're literally saving millions of dollars every year. Uh, as you can imagine, 500,000 documents generated by just 600 users every month, that's a lot of throughput that they're gaining, a lot of man hours that they're saving. So just a little bit on the ROI at this bank. Uh, there's, they estimate that they're saving about 175 work hours daily, 100-page uh, client credit documentation uh, documents that are often being created. Uh, it takes them minutes to create these commercial loans that 
that book previously it could take two to three days of of you know back and forth approval and making sure that things are are done properly. Uh, you know they average about forty plus uh, hundred of the users average about forty plus page loans uh, created daily, and then yearly of course they're doing millions of loans and they have this very controlled and automated process that uh, allows for much faster approvals and they're integrating into these other systems. We're going to talk about that service-oriented architecture and how they manage those integrations. Then, of course, they've eliminated risk and built something that's very scalable. So when they started with their implementation of Hot Docs at this bank, they started with a couple of very specific business units and have expanded to three or four more, and they're continuing to add uh, more over the future uh, so that there are various you know, small business, middle market, commercial loan, and other business units that pr provide different documentation, uh, but they're able to tie into this document uh, service for creation. So what this leads to, I've, I've spoken to this a few times, but we'll get a visual picture here of what the user experience is. So what the user does now is they see questions. So they have a loan template that they answer questions to. So that loan template uh, leads to a Hotbox data gathering session, and it's pre-filled with client data in, in their case. So when they go into this system for documentation, they select a specific loan template. I want to create a commercial term loan, and they select that, and they go in, and they see this interview process, a question and answer, that's pre-filled with client data that comes from their system of record. And then from that, they get their output documents, and those output documents go right into uh, their, their uh, ECM. So they have documents come out from that interview and go right into FileNet is their system uh, for storage of their documents. And, and so it's a very clean process. They don't have to manually put any documents in. They don't have to manually open up Word to, to create any documents. They just answer some questions. They know the data is coming from the right system and then documents are created and they're ready to be sent to the client. Now, alternatively, you might skip this interview session altogether. So they could have a loan template, and the data that comes from your loan origination system or your system of record, and it goes right to a document. So it could be a, a completely back, behind the scenes process in some cases. You're in the loan origination system, you click a button, the documents are generated and sent into the, uh, the document management system right away. So there's a, the ability to have both approaches, and they implement with both approaches at this large bank. Some business units are showing the Hotbox interview because they need to answer additional questions, and some are not. So one last uh, slide here. Let's look at the service-oriented architecture that I alluded to. So we've got Hotdocs sitting here, right? They, they wanted to implement Hotdocs across their business, and so they needed a way to make it a standard implementation so that each of the business units that needed to use it had a way to implement in a standardized way so they could centralize the with the templates and how they're created and how things are integrated into other systems. So they built this document generation service, and that's a web service layer uh, for anybody who's familiar with uh, a little bit with information technology. That's a, a layer that can be called in a browser by another application uh, to be able to get a document or to get an interview or that Q&A session for a particular uh, template. And then they integrated that with data that they had in their system of record. So they built a process that would allow hot docs to pull data from one of those systems uh, right into the interview, right into a generated document. So they built that layer. But they wanted something even flatter that for the other services they need to provide. So the benefit to this is they were able to take that document generation service and integrate it into other things that they needed as a part of their document creation process. So they integrate hot docs to be able to generate a document or to show that question and answering process, integrate FileNet or SharePoint or, you know, as far as a service layer, uh, service-oriented architecture here, you could put any of your other applications that you need to have as part of that workflow process with your documents. So document goes from hot docs right into document storage, SharePoint, FileNet, et cetera. And then from there, maybe even gets kicked into uh, an e-signature solution like DocuSign to actually go out to the client and let the client assign it. And so they set up this architecture that could be used by any of their business units. And then they've got these business units, commercial lending, middle market, small business loans, etc., 
that can have their templates created and those applications can call right into this document generation service uh, and, and it's a standardized methodology so that it allows them to easily service each of these different business units within a large bank. And so if they need to add another business unit, they add another business unit, they've got a very controlled process of how to handle that and so they're able to be a little bit more agile in how they deploy to new business units and provide a, a very great service to their internal clients to save the bank uh, a lot of money in, in, in the meantime. All right, so let's look at a demonstration. I want to talk a little bit about the demonstration here. So at this top five U.S. bank, uh, they have implemented Hot Docs and they implemented that service layer themselves and then they have their applications. So I, I can't show one of their applications. So what I'm going to use today is just a standard Hot Docs front end uh, in the browser to show you an interview for a promissory note and loan agreement so that you can see how a Hot Docs interview works and how a document gets generated on the back end. So we're not going to see a, a specific bank system here. We're going to see a generic system with a banking document in it. So in this system, I'm in my browser and I'm able to create a specific work item. So say I want to go work on a loan. I want to create a new work item. That shows me different templates that I might select from. And I happen to have just a couple of sets of documents that I set up here, one for banking and one for employment. If I choose banking, I have, I'm sorry, let me let my session sit open here too long. Let me refresh my session. So when I choose banking, then I see a list of templates that are available to me. I've just got four added in here in this example. So I can choose, I want to create a mortgage promissory note and loan agreement. So you can see Hot Docs would allow you to group your templates into different groups and be able to select them. When I hit create on mortgage loan, mortgage promissory note and loan agreement, I can add a document name. Let's say I'm doing this with an individual rather than a company, so I'll say John Jones. And then I might be able to, I might want to add a reference number. Maybe it's my actual loan number. I add. So this is just a field that allows me to enter it for reference, and I'll call this MT dash. I don't know. I'm making this up. 183. And I'm going to hit Go to Interview, and this is going to take me right into the Hot Docs interview process for this specific template. So there's a Hot Docs template for the mortgage promissory note and loan agreement. It has questions and fields in it, and that template is what's driving this interview process for the user. So as a user now, I see a Q&A that I need to answer. So in this top five U.S. bank, they, when they see this interview, it's typically pre-filled with quite a bit of data that comes from their system of record. I don't have anything tied in right here, so all of the data is empty, and I just need to answer questions. The way that these questions are grouped together, the prompts that are with them, is completely controlled by the person who creates the template. So they control how these nodes are named and, and the order of the questions, uh, what help they might provide with those questions. There are different field types that can be used in those Hot Docs templates uh, so that in the interview things might even change. So if I choose loan uh, as a term, then I get one thing. If I choose revolving line uh, of credit, then I get some mortgage note information that I need to fill out. So you can see it can be dynamic. As I answer different questions, I might see different things change. As I go through the interview, I just answer the questions and uh, provide my information. So. Some designation. Make this up. Now I have a little demonstration button that will answer everything for me. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to use that rather than type all of the answers. So that fills out all this information. We'll make this a term. So I've got different field types: date fields, number fields, options that I can select. Uh, so yes or no, or or a list of options. Uh, I've got you know drop downs. Uh, I can put patterns on fields to make sure phone numbers or social security numbers and things like that all come out correctly. As a user, I just go through and I fill out the information. I can even allow users to enter lists of information. So on a promissory note, there might be more than one borrower. So I could add more than one borrower. I could hit add another and add a secondary borrower here. I'm not going to add the information here. Uh, I'm going to leave it at one. Uh, we'll put one in. Say there's a secondary borrower here. We'll make them a company, ABC Company. We'll just make up an address here. And we'll say they're a corporation. And you can see as things change, now I need to put in who this, where the state of organization is. 
I might need to provide some signatory information, who's signing on behalf of that company, and we'll say it's me. Since I made this up, I'll be the president. And I can even add multiple signers if I want. So we can gather these lists of information from the end user. So as a user, all I'm going to do is go through and provide the answers that I need to. And when I'm done, I'm just going to hit finish. I hit finish, and it's going to take me to a screen that allows me to download my output document. So this generates an output document. I can download that output. And that's a standard Word document that came out of Hot Docs. Uh, and I open that up in Word, and we'll see my, once Word opens, we'll see my output document. So you can imagine, tightly integrated as it is at this top five bank, that output document actually goes right into their system of, or their documentation storage uh, facility, which is FileNet. Uh, so I could have it going right into a system. I could have data coming in. But here you see the power of the interview and how all those answers are used to generate this, uh, this document. So I see all of my data coming in, the values that are calculated, there's different paragraphs that were included or excluded based on the options that I chose for this particular loan agreement. And I've got a document ready to go, save it, print it, uh, whatever I need to do. All right, so we're going to switch back. So just a summary, Hot Docs allows you to improve compliance and mitigate risk at your business. It's going to allow you to save time and money and it's going to allow you to simplify your end user experience. And it can handle any document type, anything where you're doing repetitive document creation. There's the ability to take a, a simple or a very complex document and build a template from that in Hot Docs. And it handles logic and scripting to allow you to compute values and, and really manage the, the business logic that you need to in that template experience. And then, of course, you can integrate and some, uh, centralize the template control. So you can take the, the solutions that you use within your business today and leverage them to make sure that you are saving the time and the money that you need to and really simplify the end user experience uh, so that you can save the money that you need and improve your business process and, and have a, a you know, happy users and, and great turnaround time on providing professional documentation. All right. I thank you very much for your time today. I hope this uh, webinar was of benefit to you in this overview of a top five bank, how they utilize Hot Docs at their business to save uh, significant time and money. And now we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, and if you don't stick around for Q&A, thank you again very much for your time. And we'll take a short moment and have Lois read off uh, some of the questions that have been entered during the session. Thank you. Okay, we've had a few questions coming in during your presentation, Mark. So first one is, how long does it take to get up and running with hot dogs? That is a great question. Uh, so up and running can be very quick as far as implementing the solution in, in your environment. So uh, if you're integrating within other, to other products, there's going to be a little bit of you know, time to get those integrations the way that you need them configured and set up. Uh, but that setup time is... is you know, pretty controlled. The other piece of the equation, of course, is creating your template content. So there is a dependency on the time that it would take to create your template content. Creating templates is uh, very straightforward. It does not take a developer uh, to create templates. We have an authoring tool that installs along with your word processor to be able to author these Hotbox templates, and we provide great training and resources that are free and at your fingertips to be able to learn how to create those templates, as well as we provide services to help you create those templates if you want them created for you. So typically the timeline is really around how much content you're creating in those templates is what would drive how quickly you are able to deploy. A large bank like this where they implemented this many templates and implemented a, a sophisticated service-oriented architecture, and a, as you can imagine, a large business, there's a specific timeline for testing and deployment. Their deployment ran about six to nine months but you can imagine there's a very specific process for them to be able to do certain things. So the whole of the work didn't take nine months, but the timeline did. Okay, thank you. Um, another question that's come in is, uh, when the interview is done and a Word document is generated, can it be a PDF, non-editable -edit document? Absolutely, that's a great question. So Hotbox supports uh, Word documents in both RTF and DOCX format. And then Word documents can be output also as a PDF document that's protected so that users cannot edit it. Hotdocs also supports PDF-based templates. So if you have a static form 
Hotdocs can also use create a template from that static form that will allow data to go into the form and generate an output PDF. Thanks, Mark. Um, another question that's come in is um, if it was a global bank that wanted to use hot docs and it had offices in multiple countries with multiple different languages and regulatory requirements, um, would hot docs be able to cope with that? Absolutely. In fact, we have banks that are already doing that. We're deployed at some of the largest worldwide banks that are doing business across the world in multiple languages. Hotdocs supports data input from the user and the documentation in any language that can be uh, written with the Unicode character set, which is pretty much everything. So we have banks that are doing work in multiple languages, including uh, multi-byte character languages, and that would be things like Chinese or, or Japanese. Uh, so absolutely. Fantastic. And um, I've got time for a couple of other questions. So can we integrate the output to a document management system automatically? Yes, absolutely. So my demonstration did not show that today, but that is exactly what this top five U.S. bank is doing and other businesses are as well. So Hotdocs returns an output document and then there can be some integration to put that document right into SharePoint or FileNet or iManage or eDocs, whatever your ECM solution may be. So that's absolutely a possibility. Fantastic. And we've got one more question. Um, during the presentation, we talked mostly about large banks. Um, what about smaller banks that don't have quite the, the amount of documents that large ones do? Is HotDocs helpful there too? Yes, definitely. So uh, there are different abilities or ways that you can implement HotDocs. So we support both an on-premise client server model, so a browser-based solution like we looked at today. We also have a local install. Uh, that can run on every user's desktop for a smaller implementation, maybe across a very small team. And then we also have a cloud offering. So we have a very good scalability. Uh, so you get all the benefits still of being able to create the templates and be able to ask the questions and control and, and eliminate risk, uh, but you can implement on a, a smaller scale, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And um, that's all the questions that we've got for the moment. So um, thanks, everybody, for coming. Excellent. Thank you, Lois, and thank you, everyone, for your attendance today. We hope this was useful, and we will get this uh, recording posted to our site so that you can review it at, at your leisure.